What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. In this series of videos, we're going to be going over PHP. We're going to be learning the basics of PHP first, and then we're going to be moving on to more intermediate and advanced topics. In this video, we're going to be talking about what is PHP, why you should learn PHP, what is PHP generally used for, how does PHP actually work, and what do you need to code PHP. We're also going to go over what companies use PHP, what frameworks and libraries are available for PHP and what CMSs use PHP for their core code. We're also going to talk a little bit about PHP versus Node.js and Python and then a general overview of everything you'll learn within the various videos that's going to be part of this web series and this playlist. Okay, so what is PHP? PHP is a server-side scripting language. It's used primarily for web development. PHP can be embedded in HTML, used in standalone files, and on the command line. PHP 7 Plus has seen significant performance enhancements, which means it's very fast, and that matters for end users. PHP is free and cross-platform compatible. It works on Windows, Linux and Mac OS. It was created in 1994 by Rasmus Lerdorf and he originally called it the personal homepage aka PHP. But now PHP is a recursive acronym stands for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. Now why should you learn PHP? PHP is used on nearly 80% of websites. If we go over here this is w3text.com and they pretty much gather information on website usage and what CMSs are used and coding languages and things of that nature. But if we go down to the server side programming languages, we could see that PHP is number one, used by 79% of websites. If we scroll down to the server side languages surveys, we see that the languages that come closest to it is going to be ASP.NET at 10%, Ruby at 3.6, Java, Scala, Static Files, Python's at 1.4, and JavaScript is at 1%. Mind you, this is JavaScript for the server side, not the client side. JavaScript used for the client side is pretty much every website online. So you can see that PHP has the lion's share of websites that use a server-side programming language. Now how many websites are there online? If we go over here, this is internetlifestats.com. It pretty much gives you information about what's taking place right now online. So you see the total number of internet users is over 4.6 billion. We see the total number of websites is almost 1.8 billion websites. And that number is going up. We see the amount of emails being sent, how many blog posts are being written, how many Google searches are taking place, how many YouTube videos are being viewed, things of that nature. Another thing about PHP is that it's actively developed and maintained by a group of skilled developers. And that's important because you want to make sure you invest your time in a language that's mature, has been battle tested, and is being actively developed. Another thing to note is that a lot of major CMSs use PHP. So if we go back over here, we're going to see that WordPress is used by almost 38% of all dynamic websites. Joomla is used by 2.4% and Drupal is used by 1.6%. So that means if you learn PHP, these are some of the platforms you could work on. WordPress, Drupal, or Joomla. Now PHP is easy to learn and get started with. And if we do a search, look on Indeed, go to search jobs, Let's type out PHP, say PHP developer, click on find jobs. All right, so here on Indeed, it shows that this company is looking for someone who is a PHP or LAMP developer, and they're going to be paying them $110,000 per year. That's this specific company right there. Now, this one, Piper Companies, is offering $90,000 to $110,000 per year. And then you see over here, this one's for a WordPress developer. They're paying by the hour. This one's also going to be paying about $96,000 a year. This one's $110,000 to $135,000 a year. So you see that the salaries can be, you know, pretty high, pretty good salaries there. Now, this is just for PHP developers and the job search query on Indeed. Now, if we go to PHP salaries, Let's just see what it says here for that. It says, how much does a PHP developer make in New York? Well, per month it's about $6,152. Then there could be bonuses and things of that nature. This one's paying $14,000 a month. This one's paying $13,000 a month. And it shows you pretty much the breakdown of the salaries at different states compared to New York State. Okay, now in general, PHP developers won't always be making six figures, right? I mean, the average actually is about $64,000 per year. And that depends on your skill set, depends on your experience. 
depends on what you have in terms of your portfolio, things of that nature. But you can earn a good living as a PHP developer. Now, if you're freelancing as a PHP developer, your earnings are really only limited by your skill set and your marketing experience. If you really can't market your services, it's going to be hard for people to find you. If you're good at marketing your services and being found online, then you can make a good amount of money. Also, the thing about PHP, it's very efficient, it's flexible, and it's secure. Now, the thing is with security, it's really up to you though. You have to make sure you write secure code. And in this series of videos, I'm going to show you how to start off writing code. And we're going to make sure that our code is secured. But we're going to take it step by step. Now, what is PHP used for? PHP is used to create dynamic websites. You can build a template system with PHP. You can process user submitted data. You can create a membership based website. You can create an e-commerce website to sell physical or digital goods. You can work with a database like MySQL and others. You can encrypt data. You can send emails. You can work with cookies and sessions. You can use PHP on the command line. And there's not a lot of tutorials on how to use PHP on the command line, but I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. You can work with graphics. You can create PDFs. You can work with XML and JSON, and there's a lot more you could do. Now, how does PHP actually work? This goes into the request response cycle. When you're sitting at your computer or your laptop or your tablet or your smartphone, you go into a browser and you search for a website or you go to a website. The browser makes a request to a web server. Now, there's stuff that goes on here with DNS and IP addresses, network routing and things of that nature. But in general, the web server, which is either going to be Apache or Nginx, it intercepts the request and searches for a file in the file system. Imagine it's like about.php. The web server sees the .php file extension and starts processing the PHP code in the file. The file might need to interact with the database like MySQL to either create, read, update, or delete data. The server then assembles the HTML to be returned to the browser. And all of this happens within a matter of one or two seconds, maybe even faster if you configure your server to be efficient. Now, just to recap that process, your browser is the client, your website's hosted on the server, which is serving the information that's being requested. That server processes the request, connects to a database if needed, assembles the HTML, delivers the results back to your browser client. The thing to remember is that you're the client making a request to be served by the web server. And now remember, your PHP code is never delivered to the browser. It stays on your server, it processes the request, and your code logic is not viewable by a website visitor. That's the difference between a client-side coding language like HTML, CSS, and client-side JavaScript and server-side coding languages like PHP, Python, Node.js, which is JavaScript for the server-side, and others. Now, what do you need to code PHP? You need a computer. It can be either Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. You need a code editor like Atom, VS Code, or Sublime Text. You need a web browser like Chrome or Firefox. You need a local web server and PHP, which is provided by either XAMPP or MAMP, but you also need to dedicate time to learning PHP. Ideally, a minimum of about one hour per day. Two hours is better. The more time you can dedicate to learning, the better and faster you become a professional developer. You're also going to need good tutorials. They could be from books, from videos, from the documentation pages. And when it comes to the documentation pages, I definitely recommend bookmarking them. You're going to need a lot of patience and you're going to need a lot of coffee. What companies use PHP? Some of the biggest companies out there are Facebook, Slack, Lyft, WhatsApp, MailChimp, Wikipedia, Etsy, Dailymotion, WordPress.com, Tumblr, Dig, and really millions of bloggers, small, medium, and large businesses use PHP for their server-side code. When it comes to frameworks and libraries for PHP, you have a lot of options. You have Laravel, Symfony, CodeIgniter, Zen Framework, Fuel PHP, Slim, Falcon, Cake PHP, Yi2, and others. And the frameworks and libraries are good because they help you to develop faster. But I definitely recommend first learning vanilla PHP before you move on to something more complex. 
And when it comes to CMSs, I briefly mentioned it already, but we have WordPress, Drupal, Joomla, Magento, Craft CMS, October CMS, and even more. It's a lot of content management systems out there that use PHP at their core. Now, the million dollar question, PHP versus Node.js versus Python. Which language should you learn? Which is the most popular language to use? Well, there's a bunch of websites that rank the popularity of a particular coding language. You have the Stack Overflow survey which is always a popular one you have the octoverse on github you have teobe which also does a ranking of the various coding languages and you have others now the thing to remember is that what are you using the coding language for and what are the ranking systems looking at me personally when it comes to php node.js and python i use all three languages but for different purposes php is primarily used for server-side web development and is best used by those who want to focus purely on web development. Python can also be used for web development and it could be used for creating simple desktop programs, automation, data science, machine learning, and more. So pretty much Python is best for those who want a versatile language that can be used for different purposes. Node.js is JavaScript for the server and it can be used for automation, server-side development, and is best for those already familiar with JavaScript and who aren't really interested in learning a new language. But remember, PHP is used on nearly 80% of websites. Python is used on about 1.4% and Node.js is used on about 1% of websites. So when it comes to the comparison of PHP versus Node.js versus Python, if you're going to be focusing on web development, it's best to use PHP. Now, what will you learn in this series of PHP videos? I'm going to teach you how to develop locally. We're going to go over all the PHP syntax. We're going to cover the data types supported by PHP decision making with PHP. We're going to go over functions, strings, arrays, operators, loops, form processing, session and cookie creation and management, databases used by PHP. We're going to go over different programming paradigms like procedural code, object oriented programming, functional programming. Then I'm going to take you into more advanced topics like data structures and algorithms, design patterns, PHP regular expressions, working with the file system. We're going to also cover how to send email with PHP, work with XML and JSON data, and very importantly, how to write secure code. So just to recap, PHP is a server-side scripting language used on nearly 80% of websites. PHP developers are always in demand, and the pay is good. And in this course, I will show you how to code PHP and to become a professional PHP developer. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, click the notification icon, comment down below, and I will see you in the next video. Happy coding. Oh,